Hello lovely people and welcome to Guitar Elevation. I'm Jack and today I'm going to show you what are the next steps you can take in case you feel that you've mastered your pentatonic scale after this. All right, people, so what we're gonna do today is some very interesting shapes that we're gonna learn on the pentatonic. So for the purpose of this lesson, I'm using the pentatonic minor scale. We're gonna do some examples in A minor, but of course, everything we do can be transposed to all of the other keys. So be my guest in doing that yourself. What I'm gonna show you today is gonna help you to shred all over the neck without thinking. That's the point without thinking. It's gonna also help you connect ideas from one area of the fretboard to another area of the fretboard. And most importantly, you're gonna sound cool and you will be able to impress your friends. <laughs> of course, if that's what you want. All right, so here's the thing. We wanna play on two strings and we wanna cover the entire fretboard. So the first position of the pentatonic minor scale or what I like to call or what is widely known as the first position is this one. I'm pretty sure you know it. Now the second position would start on the second note of the pentatonic, the third on the third note, so on and so forth, position four and position five. All right. now. These positions are great for starters, but when I think about those positions, I can't help but think about a tunnel. It's like you, you have your head in a tunnel and you can't see anything else. And basically we're losing a lot instead of taking advantage of the whole length of the fretboard. So this is why now what we're doing, we'll cover the entire fretboard. To start, we're gonna pick two strings of our six strings here. So you can take any pair of strings. I'm gonna take the highest two strings, the E string and the B string for this example, for this first example. Now, we're not gonna throw away uh, the positions that we know, position one through five. We're gonna use them in order to come up with a new system. So I'm gonna be using the first two strings of every single shape. This is shape one, this is shape two, this is shape three, shape four, shape five. Now, if you want to follow along with me using the tabs and the diagrams, you can download everything on the link below, but do that either at the end of the lesson or open a new tab. Let's continue. And if you're advanced, stick till the end because it's all going to come together and we need to cover everything. We need to build this up as we go. So it's very important for us not only to take the first two strings from every position, but to know where is our root note, because I'm gonna be calling the shapes depending on where my root note is. The first two strings here give me this shape, one, four, one, four. I'm gonna call this shape the first position. Even though I'm not starting on the A note here, I'm starting on the E note on fret five on the B string. However, I'm gonna call it first position just because it's easier to think about it as being the first position if you're looking from the low E string because usually that's where guitar players look at their pentatonic shapes. So that's not a problem if we call it position number one. So for position number one, my root note is on the index. It's on the index, but it's on the highest string of those pair of strings. It's very important to remember this. It's on the higher string. Now for position number two, my root note is on the third finger, the ring finger. And it's on the first string of the pair, okay? So for position one, this is my root note. Position two, this is my root note. Now for position number three, my root note is under my index finger. Very important again, it's under my index finger and it's on the B string. So it's on the first string of the pair. And I'll get this shape, which we call shape number three. All right, it's one, four, one, three. 
or whatever fingers you want to use. All right, now, here, if you look at position three, it's as if I'm opening up, all right? So this shape is opening up, and then position number four is closing this shape. All right, check this out, position three. I have an opening here, and then I close it, and it forms this block from here to here. So I open, I close. Awesome. So here, as you can see in position number four, we don't have the root note inside the shape, but that's not a problem. And at the end, we have position number five. And for position number five, my A note is on the third finger, the ring finger, but this time it's on the highest string. Now, you can memorize those shapes like that, depending on the root note, or you could also memorize them depending on the box shapes of the pentatonic that we know. Either way, you need to know where your root note is because it's very important to know what shape is coming next. That's the thing here, is that your root note and the position of that root note is giving away the next shape. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a minute to practice this if you want to. Practice this, pause the video if you need to, get used to it, because we're gonna take that and do it and apply it on all the other strings. So, as another example, let's take the A string and the D string. And let's start playing from pentatonic position one, box shape. In this pentatonic position one, I get which shape? I get basically my A note here on the higher string of the pair and my ring finger on that note. So that's basically shape number five. Therefore, after that, I get shape number one. Then I get shape number two, shape number three, shape number four, shape number five. Now you can see it that way or you could see it as this being the shape one, this being the shape two, this being the shape three, this being the shape four, as you wish. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you memorize those and you get them down your finger. Okay, so practice this on all the pair of strings. But let me tell you something, as you know, between the G and the B string, you always have to move one fret up when it comes to the B string. So here my shapes become. If you need to pause the video and train on that a little bit, do that. Now it's time to move on for us. All right, so now let's put into use what we just learned. But a piece of advice, get those shapes down your fingers before you attempt to do any of those exercises or those examples. Now, as an example, number one, let's suppose I want to start on pentatonic shape one and want to go up to this area of the fretboard. I could do something like... So basically what I did, I used the G and the B strings, but instead of using it as is, like that, I slid into the notes, like that. All right, awesome. Now let's do another example, this one in reverse. Okay, so now I use the E and the B strings, and I also didn't play it as is, I used single notes. Awesome stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna play now over a track so that we can put all of this into use. I also want you to try and come up with your own licks using this concept. You get the track below, I'm gonna put the link for it so that you can play over that track. And like I said, try to memorize the shapes first, 
then try to come up with licks without the track and then try to adapt them to the track. It's a new and cool idea that you can use inside your solos. It's very refreshing and it's gonna steer you away from the cliche box shapes. Don't get me wrong, those shapes are good for starters, but we need to expand and we need to always keep looking for new ways to express our you know inner voice and our musicality so use them and abuse them and let me know what you what licks you come up with all right i'm looking forward to hear all of your questions in the comments now let's get to play pick your guitar and make your own licks <laughs> 